Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we are going to uncover the past and secrets of Marcus Stesen de Polarno, the infamous and decadent ruler of the Isle of Gastria. Before we begin, a few clarifications. First, I would like to say a few words about the new wizard's OGL. The liquid text of the proposal is abusive and draconic, and must have been written by some devil from Bator under Asmodeus' command. Although I don't understand much about North American law, as a lawyer, I imagine that countless battles will be fought over whether OGL 1.0 can be replaced by wizards, as it previously assured that it would be a perpetual license. Trust is like a delicate ceramic vase, and once broken, there is no way to repair it. I don't have much to protest against Wizards' move, since I'm no longer a customer of their products, as I don't have a D&D Beyond subscription, I don't play or buy 5th edition books, and I honestly didn't like the direction Ravenloft went under the Wizard of the Coast rule. I understand and support the community movement, and I think it will be productive and healthy for people to try and play other RPGs. I am a big fan of World of Darkness and Call of Cthulhu, and I really want to try other systems like Shadow of the Demon Lord, Dread, Ten Candles, Alien, and Cult. Ravenloft remains a property of Wizards and Hasbro. However, I will not let a greedy corporate decision take away my passion and dedication to this setting. The Ravenloft setting was kept alive by the community of fans when it was abandoned by wizards, and so it shall continue to be. The countless hours you and I have devoted to D&D and Ravenloft belong to us, not them, and nothing will change that. As for the Hour of the Raven YouTube channel, it will not be affected by the OGL changes, as it is covered by the fan content policy. The Black Feather books, the Dread Space, and other upcoming projects will also not be affected, as they are under the specific license of the DM's guild. We will continue to explore the myths of Ravenloft here, but I will leave an open question to you. Would you like to see content from other RPG systems and settings? or from horror books and movies that might relate to this content? Let me know in the comments. Second, if you have seen our previous videos about Gastria, you already know that to flesh out this domain, we are expanding beyond official sources of the Ravenloft campaign setting and drawing in inspiration from alternate sources and fan material created by the Fraternity of Shadows website. The domain of Gastria first appeared in an RPGA adventure called Dance of the Dead, and was later featured in the book Dark Lords. After the first appearance, it only received mentions in the book Domains of Dread and the third edition Ravenloft campaign setting. The domain would be covered in one of the third edition gazetteers, focused on the Sea of Sorrows, but unfortunately, White Wolf's license to release books for the setting came to an end, and these books were not written. The Ravenloft fan community wouldn't let the setting rot in oblivion. The Fraternity of Shadows website, the most well-known and organized site for fans of the setting, has published netbooks that continue the Gazetteer proposal, exploring in-depth the domains of dread. Some of these books explore the Nocturnal Sea, the Domain of Soren, or the Cluster of Zerisha, for example, and for some time now they are developing a gazetteer for the Sea of Sorrows. Although the Sea of Sorrows gazetteer is not yet finalized as a book, some of its passages, describing domains, had already been previewed by their authors in the Court of the Raven netbooks. In the video description, I will also leave a link where you can download the netbook. The previous videos about Gastria and this video about Marcus Stesen will be based on the official material and the article about Gastria written by David Jester Gibson. 
the article on Gastria was published as a preview of the Gazetteer of the Sea of Sorrows, and it's possible that the final text will change when the Gazetteer of the Sea of Sorrows is finally published. Are you ready? In our travels through the Sea of Sorrows, in search of the whereabouts of Dr. Rudolf von Richten, we stop for a short time on the island of Gastria. After a disturbing dinner with the Baron Cama de Moroso, we are invited to the famous ball promoted by the Marquis de Polarno, and fearing to offend even more the local nobility, we accept the invitation to the event. In the Marquis' palace, overcome by our curiosity, we enter his library and found hidden texts by the Marquis de Polarno containing Gastria in famous secrets. Our secret reading is interrupted by approaching footsteps, and we quickly retreat to a door to hide in an unknown part of the palace. In a corridor of the vast palace, we cannot go back to the library, and we continue exploring the halls in search of an exit, until we came across a vast art gallery. Magnificent paintings adorn the walls, and some seem to stare at us disturbingly by the light of our single candle. In one of the paintings, a beautiful woman seems to be pointing in one direction, and our eyes follow a door hidden by a sumptuous curtains. When we look again at the painting, we discover that the woman pointing in this direction is no longer in the painting, and we wonder if the dim candlelight and shadows are not affecting our vision or sanity. After this hidden door, we discover a large room where a single painting seems to dominate the environment, a portrait of the handsome and imposing Marquis. We appreciate the painting for a moment, and discover in the room a table with some freshly written pages, with ink still fresh. This cannot be text by the former Marquis de Polarno, but from the current Marquis who occupies the palace. The writing bears great similarities, and can only belong to the same person, and they reveal to us the dark secrets of Marquis Stesen de Polarno. Power of Raven Tell me, my honored guest, what do you think of this beautiful sculpture? Immoral and wicked, you say? A blasphemy against religion and customs? Ah, but what a tedious and ordinary opinion! Only when free from the shackles of moral and virtue can a person finally be free to reach his potential, to satisfy his longings and touch the sublime. Those who adapt their ideas and actions to the values of others are nothing but fools. But don't give up yet. Come with me so I can show you the most beautiful painting in my collection. It will certainly leave you speechless. Marquis Stesen de Polarno is the Dark Lord of Gastria and is a wicked, immoral and decadent aristocrat who became immortal by having his soul trapped in a painting. The character of Marcus Stesen addresses themes such as debauchery, immorality and vice, and adapts the literary character of Dorian Gray from Oscar Wilde's book of The Picture of Dorian Gray to the setting of Ravenloft, and also has strong influence from the historical figure of the writer Marquise de Sade. Marcus Stesen is a human who had his soul trapped in a painting by the power of dark magic and currently has over 200 years of life. His appearance is beautiful and ageless and it is difficult to determine his age, with the Marquis being able to appear to be any age between 20 and 40, depending on the convenience of his intentions and the use of makeup. He always dresses in the elegant and luxurious clothes of the aristocracy, although he tends to adopt more somber tones during his periods of depression and lethargy. He has no beard, just sideburns, 
and have black eyes and long hair, usually tied back in a single ponytail, tied with bows. Although he doesn't hesitate to change his hairstyle to stay in touch with the latest fashion. Before having his soul imprisoned, the Marquis was not only handsome but quite charismatic, and his vibrant personality and love of life's refined pleasures made him quite influential and likable. He used this social mask to hide the figure of a cruel, manipulative, ambitious, and unscrupulous man. After having his soul imprisoned, he became incapable of feeling emotions and lives without any joy or pleasure. As a result, he became distant, cold and calculating, and lost some of his personal magnetism, and these frustrations perhaps only increased his ruthlessness. For a few short periods, however, he regains his soul and capacity to feel, and becomes attractive and charismatic again, although his personality is marked by excesses, vice, and the eagerness he has to make up for lost time during his period of lethargy and depression, and he behaves in a perverse and immoral way. Marcus Stesen de Polano was an experienced fighter in the second edition, and in the Gastria article we use it as a reference for this video, for third edition of D&D, he has three levels of aristocrat and eight levels of fighter. Although he avoids combat whenever possible, he is quite skilled with rapiers and has a collection of weapons, some of them enchanted. He has a powerful resistance to magical effects and, with the exception of short periods throughout the year, he is immortal, not aging normally and having a powerful ability of regeneration. The Marquis is cursed and cannot have any feeling or sensation of pleasure, living a life of frustrations, apathy and depression. Once every three months, he can use the power of his cursed painting to drain the soul of victims while looking at the picture. He has only to wish, and the spectator's souls are drained into the painting, and for one hour for each victim drained, he receives his soul back in his body, being able to feel once again. During this period, he dedicates himself to the satisfaction of his repressed desires, and he loses his immortality, and can be injured or killed. His cunning and perversity have led him to rise as the ruler of Gastria, but his lethargic and disinterested rule has already brought him into conflict with the populace. For a few times, the Marquis has already reinvented himself and created new personas to govern, and now he is determined to maintain and prosper in power. As the Dark Lord of Gastria, he can close the borders of his domain, causing large panoramic paintings, like theater sets, to appear on the borders, preventing anyone from escaping. These paintings are only noticed when someone tries to walk through them, and they are indestructible. During the brief periods in which he recovers his soul, however, he is no longer able to seal the boundaries of his domain. But what has led the Marquis to this cursed condition? What were the Marquis' crimes and evil deeds that made him the Dark Lord of Gastria? Marquis Stesen de Polarno was born over 200 years ago in one of the most traditional noble families of the region of Gastria. He was the most influential Marquis in the realm and was adored by the masses. His personal magnetism, beauty and lifestyle made him a celebrity among the aristocracy and commoners alike, but he was also known for being a champion of the people, defending their interests for lower taxes, fair trials, and better living conditions. This public persona was actually a mask, which hid an ambitious and unscrupulous man who used politics to promote his own interests and gains. Those who discovered the truth about his interests or threatened to expose his agenda ended up murdered 
and the Marquis was the mastermind or executor of over a hundred murders. The Polano had a great rivalry with King Orderic and coveted the power that the monarch possessed. In turn, King Orderic resented Marquis Stezan popularity and his constant manipulations of the popular masses against his rule. Both rivals shared some in common, unbeknownst to them, as they were both lovers of Lady Annelise, a powerful witch and courtesan who had infiltrated the royal court. During a bitter winter, Marquis Stezen tried to instigate popular revolt and incite the masses against King Orderic, insinuating that he was storing grain in his palace while the people were starving. The skillful King Orderic managed to circumvent the crisis and released his food reserve to the people to placate the revolt, and furious, determined the arrest of the dissident aristocrat and agitator. Marquis Stezan de Polarno went to the royal dungeons, where he spent a few months in captivity. The Marquis was a very popular and beloved figure, and the king feared the negative impact and influence that an execution order against his rival would have on the kingdom. In search of a solution to this impasse, he asked his lover, Lady Annelise, for a way to neutralize the Marquis, and she suggested the creation of a magical painting to imprison his soul, robbing him of any feeling or joy in life. Chained, he was forced to pose for the gruesome painting and the Marquis had his soul stolen, and then was freed by the king. Unable to feel any emotions, he lost his charm and enjoyment of life, and the once influential and charismatic Marquis became apathetic, depressed, and unable to lead. His frustration and bitterness led him to quickly become an antagonist to his allies, and even the club was no longer affected by his influence now that he was only a shadow of the vibrant political leader he once was. One of the few who remained faithful to his former master was Kama de Maroso, a skilled bard of humble origins, who was his main ally to instigate the population and spread rumors and intrigue. The Marquis might not feel anything anymore, but he never lost his desire for revenge. After a year living in humiliation, he and Kamar de Moroso planned their revenge against the royal court, and during a feast of the Pascha's festivities, he poisoned all the food, murdering all the aristocracy of the kingdom. The event also marked the date when the region of Gastria was engulfed in the mists. Somewhere between 560 and 580 of the Barovian calendar, on this date, too, as if reflecting the Marquis curse, all drinks and foods in Gastria lost all its flavor. The sudden chaos and horror of isolation from the known world gripped the region of Gastria, and the Marquis Stezan de Polarno assumed the rule and control of the region, exercising his prerogatives as the highest ranked aristocrat. Despite becoming the absolute ruler of the region, we refused to assume the title of king, and was still depressive and lethargic. His revenge did not bring him any satisfaction, as he had imagined, and to compensate for his lack of disposition, he named his main ally, Baron Kama de Maroso, and he watered him with titles and lands. Baron Kama de Maroso became his right-hand man in the government, and he was the one who ruled and administered Gastria in its daily affairs. The Marquis stayed most of the time in his palace, until one day, by chance, he discovered a way to recover his feelings, sensations, and desire to live for a brief period. While being attended by a beautiful servant of his palace, he began to imagine how he would seduce the woman, and he wished intensely to have his soul back. To his surprise, 
the woman dropped dead before his cursed paint, and he returned briefly to feel and enjoy life. For a long time, he tried to reactivate the cursed paint's powers without success, until three months later, when the seasons changed, he managed to drain the souls of new victims again. He finally discovered that he could drain souls from those who watched the painting in this period and enjoy a short period of vividness, feeling and sensations again. Another old ally resurfaced to seek to approach this new powerful Marquis. Late Annelies, the witch, had escaped the attack that poisoned the court, and when she saw the Marquis in a position of power, she tried to seduce and approach him once more, hoping to become his queen. Incapable of any feeling and immune to her charms, the Marquis feigned proximity and suggested to paint a picture of the future queen. During the painting, he threw poisonous paint over her entire body, which led to a slow and agonizing death. She cursed Stezen as she lay dying but her spirit found no rest. Annelies' death turned her into a ghost that began to haunt paintings in Gastria. Her figure can appear in any frame of the domain and even interact with elements of the painting as if they were objects. A few years after his death, she tried to take revenge on the Marquis, haunting the paintings of the ancient cathedral of the East Riding village she posed as a holy figure, and through elaborate gestures and signs, began to reveal the secrets of the Marquis to the priests, to turn them against him. Stezen, however, discovered Lady Annelise's plot in time, and decided to put an end to the trap, murdering the priests, burning and devastating the cathedral, and banishing any religious practice from his lands. Gastria was growing through a severe economic crisis, as it had been cut off from the world around it. These were also bloody and violent times in Gastria. Despite the Marquis consolidating himself as its absolute ruler, he did nothing about the horror that took over the region. When many small nobles began to openly fight for the power vacant left by the massacre of the Pascas festival, trying to ascend socially, and take over their properties without honor. His perversity, cruelty and disinterest were accompanied by the growing corruption of Baron de Moroso in the management of his lands. For the Marquis, those who were his friends were above the law, and his personal guard committed all sorts of atrocity without punishment. His word was law, and he judged any demand based on his wins and the moods at the time. Those who dared to challenge his authority were arrested, tortured and murdered. Stazen showed contempt and indifference to the horrors faced by the population, and he maintained a luxurious and hedonistic lifestyle, supported by increasing taxes. Even though he was incapable of feeling or taking pleasure in any sensation, he surrounded himself with luxuries and riches and looked forward to the change of season, where he held splendorous feasts that ended with dozens of dead people. During these periods of withdrawal, he was cold, distant and depressed. His only respite was to imagine the most wanton and perverse acts he planned to do when he regained his soul, and he went to write short stories, elating his suppressed immoral longings. When the change of season finally came, he held great opulent festivities, of which countless of his guests were slain before his cursed painting. A few were spared by the Marquis, however, so that in the hours after the massacre, they would accompany him and serve him in the satisfaction of his decadent and immoral impulses. During this period, when Gastro remained isolated by the mists, he knew that the disappearance of the island inhabitants would draw attention, but he had no choice, nor could he control his impulses. For this reason, the Marquis took an avid interest in strangers who came to his lands, and it was not uncommon for many to be invited to attend festivities in his mansion, 
only to never be seen again. Worse, the Marquis ruled for over a century without aging, and sinister rumors started to circulate among the populace of his involvement in the dark arts of necromancy. When a trail through the mist was discovered in the woods, leading to the elven land of Sirikus, Gastia was finally able to find a source of commerce for its economy. The Marquis, however, wanted not only to know about this outside world that he could never visit, but above all, that more foreigners would come to his lands so he could feed their souls for his painting. To this end, the Mark sent his most loyal vassal, Baron Kamar de Maroso, to foreign lands to collect information and attract visitors to his lands. The already corrupted and monstrous Baron Kamar de Maroso had become a glutinous guest due to his cannibalistic habits, and he took advantage of his departure from Gastria as his ambassador and messenger to satisfy his gastronomic desires. In the absence of Baron Kama, who was responsible for helping the Marquis to govern and control the population, Stezen's luck would suffer a terrible setback. In the year 736, the Mists brought a group of adventurers to the region. They were invited to the Marquis festivities. They fell victim to the cursed painting, having their souls drained. Their bodies were disposed, but the adventurers refused to remain dead. Driven by a desire for revenge, they came back to life as revenants, and the undead returned to East Riding Village, accusing the Marquis of trying to steal their souls through dark magic. These adventurers were not satisfied with spreading rumors and invading the Marquis' palace. After battling the Marquis and realizing that they would not be able to defeat this immortal enemy, they decided to take revenge in another way, setting fire to his palace and stealing his cursed painting. The adventurers attempted to flee from Gastria with the painting, but found that they were unable to cross the mists that surrounded the region. They then decided to deliver the painting to a Vistani caravan, but even they could not move the cursed painting through the mists, and they began to wander around Gastria, hiding from the desperate searches of the Marquis. This public defeat of the Marquis, and the growing rumors of his involvement in supernatural arts, made the population rise against his abuse. Little by little, a rebellion formed and the Marquis' personal guard began to fear the fury of the enraged mob. In the year 737, a new group of adventurers arrived in Gastria, but this time the Marquis hired them as mercenaries to retrieve the painting. The adventurers succeeded in retaking the painting from the Vistani and returned it to the Marquis, who repaid them with a betrayal. Revolted, they turned against him and defeated him in combat, leaving his body bleeding and broken in the halls of his palace. Believing that they had murdered him, the adventurers abandoned his body in his mansion. The rebellious population finally decided to act and invaded the palace in sequence, like an angry mob, and found his injured and mutilated body trying to rise again. Fearing he was a vampire, they drove a stake through his chest and decapitated his head, and his palace was set on fire. Some of his scandalous literary texts were found and removed from the palace on this occasion, which shocked the readers and would ensure the Marquis' literary infamy to this day. Despite the fire, the paint that contained his soul remained intact and the Marquis' body, decapitated, impaled and burned, began to slowly regenerate. After a long period, he finally composed himself with a decrepit human form, and the Marquis, hidden in his own lands, reflected on his situation. 
he realized that he had become complacent and careless, trusting too much on his own immortality. He had done nothing to placate the populace he despised, and even to hide the fact that he didn't age, and if he kept drawing in attention to himself, he would end up being defeated once more, or maybe even killed by other adventurers who came to his domain. With Baron Kamar de Maroso still far away in distant lands in these moments of greatest need, he decided to reinvent himself, assume a new identity, and take back the government of his lands. After the presumed death of Marquis Stesen de Polarno, and during his absence and regeneration, a power vacant had arisen in Gastria, without a central authority. Other nobles tried to take power, and old blood feuds erupted. Fees were no longer collected, and every type of public service ceased to be provided. The Marquis' personal guard became a criminal militia, extorting money for protection, and the population defended their relatives and possessions against the chaos and criminality that was established during the anarchy. In 740, the land of Gastria was shaken by several tremors during the Grand Conjunction, and even the trail of mists that linked it to Citicus was lost, isolating these lands even further in their own chaos. For four years, Gastria survived a period of chaos and destruction, until in 741, when, realizing that the destruction and despair in his lands had reached unprecedented levels, the Marquis Stesen decided that it was time to regain power. He arrived in East Riding claiming to have come through the mists, and to be a bastard son of the old Marquis Stesen, the offspring of an extramarital affair the Marquis had at one of his infamous parties that was raised by his mother in distant lands. Named after his father, the Stesen de Polarno II had a physiognomy very similar to that of his progenitor, but while the appearance of the former Marquis, although beautiful, was marked by abuses and excesses of his hedonistic lifestyle, his son was lean and slender, and even looked a little older than his father. The result of times of deprivation and regeneration of his body while he waited. Stesen, in his new persona, proved to be a skillful and influential negotiator. He managed to assume his father's inheritance and possessions, but initially refused the title of Marquis. After gaining support from the militia and aristocracy, he placated the rebellious people with donations of part of his fortune, restoring some semblance of order in the lands of Gastria. As if the mists themselves recognized a new era in Gastria, they parted around the domain, revealing the beach and sea around them. Now an island, Gastria has found a salvation from its economic difficulties. Its inhabitants found in the oceans a lucrative fishing activity, which not only alleviates a little the lack of flavor that contaminates the region's food, but also opens up new commercial possibilities. Stesen, used part of his family resources to build a port in Gastria, and soon ships from other parts of the core arrived on the island, breaking its isolation and bringing exchange, wealth and commerce, and above all, an enormous amount of possible seasonal victims to his festivities. Stesen was determined to restore his family's surname and make up for the atrocities and horrors that surrounded his previous rule. His generous gestures and donations, and the sudden prosperity of Gastria, made the population quickly forget the past, and he was hailed as the new Marquis by the local aristocracy. During this period, Baron Kamar de Maroso, long isolated from his homeland by the isolation of Gastria, was finally able to return. He found his master and domain in a very different state, however, and resented the realization that the Marquis had taken back the powers he had previously relinquished to him. 
under the name of Marques Stesen de Polarno II, he strategically calmed the population and re-established old laws and minimum guarantees. He adopted more discreet habits and lived much of the time in seclusion in his mansion. Despite this, he still held scandalous parties on his state, where rarely could anyone confirm what transpired at these private events or the fate of many of his guests. The opening of the island also brought contact with different foreign cultures and the increase in the exchange and cultural influence made religious influence reach the islands. Anchorites of Ezra arrived to convert the population. Much was speculated whether Marcus Stesen II would have such a violent reaction to religious practices on the island, but reviewing his previous position and believing that the spirit of Lady Annelise had disappeared, he was indifferent to the presence of clerics in his lands. More than that, in the year 755, the island received an expedition of missionaries anchorites who agreed with the Marquis to build a great cathedral of Ezra on the island. The construction is still ongoing, is being partially funded by the Marquis as one of the last acts of his false persona. The truth is that the Marquis, aware of the passage of time and his lack of aging, and tired of his false personality of tolerance and benevolence, entered into a false agreement with the Anchorites to announce that they would take to be educated in one of the monasteries, the son of Marcus Stesen, a boy of 18 years old, who lived in seclusion in his mansion. Some years later, after almost 20 years of his false identity, Marcus Stesen de Polarno simulated his death in an alleged hunting accident when he would have been attacked by a wild boar in the year 759. This strategy served only to ensure that shortly afterwards, he arrived on the island as his mysterious son, Marcus Stesen de Polarno III, to assume his father's title and property. To protect his secret, he ordered his agent to burn down the supposed monastery where he was being educated on the mainland, eliminating all witnesses who might contradict his version of events. After changing his appearance and wearing makeup, he presents himself as a young man, and confident that the populace has forgotten the infamy of the Marquis' name in the past, he plans his future years as ruler and the debauchery that lies ahead. Our readings of the notes in the hall contain the Marquis painting, bring us sinister revelations and makes it clear that the current Marquis Stesen is the same individual who has been alive for over two centuries as a cursed dark lord. Suddenly, our ponderings are interrupted by laughter and festive comments, and we hide inside an old cabinet and closet. We listen attentively as the Marquis opens the door of the saloon, leading dozens of guests there to show them the masterpiece of his art collection, a painting with his portrait. The festive comments shortly turn into screams of horror, and we hear the dry sound of bodies fading to the ground, followed by a manic laugh of the Marquis. Overcome by his repressed desires, he shout orders to Baron de Maroso to clear the house of corpses. When everything seems silent, he came out of the closet, but in the face of the large number of servants of the Marquis nearby, the only way we have to escape is by mixing ourselves with the bodies and pretending that we are dead. We are carried by servants of Baron de Maroso to a carriage of bodies, covered with a sailcloth and in the dead of night, taken to an uncertain destination, presumably to be fed to ghosts. Before reaching our destination, we carefully jump out of the carriage and stealthily return to our ship as quickly as possible. The next day, we beg the ship captain to let us stay hidden on the ship until we left. 
Interestingly, short before departure time, a messenger from the Marquis arrives at the ship, informing that several of the passengers had decided to stay longer on the island as his guests, and that later he would arrange a vessel for them to return. Knowing that no ship will never take them off Gastria, we are grateful as the ship departs this cursed island, taking us to our next stop, the island of Blaustian. Before we head into the domain of Blaustian, however, let's take a short break from our travels to explore a version of a domain of the 5th edition of Ravenloft. The domain of Gastria does not have a version in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, although the Seer of Sorrows appears briefly in a short description. Instead, instead, on the next video we are going to be covering some of the domains that were previously covered on the channel before the Van Richten Guide to Ravenloft was published. Join us, subscribe and turn on notifications. And we will begin our coverage of 5th edition domains previously covered by our channel with Valakan, a jungle where bloodthirsty games are held in honor of the Dark Lord Shakuna. <laughs>